being that youth at one time, that, that child that was struggling, it first starts with, you know, the mental, your mental um, piece of how you're thinking about life, how you're deciding how you want to respond to what you're feeling and thinking. And, and you know, it's such a, a quiet place that no one can tap. Um, not even your own parents. You you can have the upbringing that's stable. That's um, they're they're not even teaching you how to be an addict. Um, I grew up in a healthy home. It, it was a single parent home. Um, but looking back at it now, of course, I have more insight. Um, and there was issues of anger and resentment because I didn't have my father in my life. So. You know, there's a lot of um, a youth organizations that are focusing on such big, bigger issues. Um, you know, the real, the, the abuse, um, sexual abuse, child abuse, physical child abuse, things like that. But it really goes down to the very smaller things that are very big things to us as a child. And so um, looking back when my mom left my father because of he was um, he wasn't even Native American, he's Hispanic. And um, we lived in Los Angeles and um, my mom is sister in Wapaton, Dakota, and my dad is Hispanic. And so we I, I actually was born out there and then we left and we came back to um, Sisseton, South Dakota when I was eight. And, um, you know, I had a lot of anger issues towards my mother and I was angry for her leaving my dad and not understanding the relationship and that she really did that for the best um, of our interest. And um, he was abusive to her and, and um, of course the addiction um, that he had going on there. But, um, and so I was angry at her for the longest time and then when I got to be about 12-ish and above, then I was angry at him. So then it turned because then I felt like you should be here. You know, I was, then I was just angry at everything because he wasn't there for me to be angry about. So really what was happening is that um, nobody was talking to me about this. There wasn't any intervention. Um, and it should have been my mother and my father that were talking to me, even if it was separately talking to me about it, um, trying to explain that to me. You know, um, by the time I was 12, I, I think I would have understood at least some of the basics, you know. And so I grew up angry. I felt um, more so cheated. Um, I would say cheated first, then it turned into anger. So I was really resentful at life. Um, I had a chip on my shoulder. I, there's a victimhood that kicks in. Um, I start feeling like, um, you know, when you're cheated, you feel like then a victim. And so you use that as a crutch going through life. Then, then that's your excuse to drink. See, that's your excuse to use. You know, nobody cares. Why should I care? And that's where it starts. And so then you start taking off. You start leaving and, and you know, you, you run from home and, um, and uh, you know, you just don't even want to be there because you just think that no one cares. And um, when really it was like my mom was a loving, very loving, meek, mild uh, mother, um, didn't have a drinking, any kind of addiction issue. And it was just that she didn't know how to deal with that. She didn't know how to handle that. And you know, we didn't have psychology like we do now. You know, and even, well, today it's expanded so much from when I was a child to the issues today. There's not, there's not enough demand. I mean, excuse me, the demand is higher than the actual psychologists that we can provide. And so there's not enough to go around. And so that's why I say that this is spiritual warfare um, because it's in our mind. We're, we're talking about uh, issues when we talk about behavioral health. Well, substance abuse is separate from mental health issues, but a lot of them are coincided. Every individual is different, um, but a lot of the times they are co-mingled. And so when you hear all of these different issues, you know, they're, they're labeling them. You know, we've always heard of schizophrenia, 
Um, we've heard of, um, you know, bipolar, um, and I'm just trying to think of some of the other ones, you know, but they're starting to create new diagnoses. And um, I don't delve into that too much, but I need to understand the science. Um, but the strategies that we want to bring are actually spiritual and cultural. And we know that there's not um, enough experts, psychiatrists, um, psychologists, um, counselors, and all of this. And plus, it's not affordable. And the people that we're dealing with that have these issues um, can't afford those services. Um, and so, you know, I, I just believe in peer support. And that's what we're creating. Um, that's what we're creating by creating these environments. We're creating a peer support uh, environment so, um, and education. So bringing in those that are um, you know, knowledgeable, the experts in these fields to talk about the science, the evidence that we know, but then also bringing in the peer support who've actually been there and, and figured out some way to either manage it or overcome it. And so then that's where we start finding our own path of how to navigate through life. And life is too complex. And it's such in little boxes. It's so segre segregated into all of these different arenas. And so um, by bringing in peer support, whether we focus on, you know, we focus on addiction recovery. Um, we just got asked for suicide prevention. Um, we actually um, just got an opportunity. So we'll be starting that. Um, we have some young adults, Native American young adults, who actually want to lead that effort. They're, um, they're fed up with this happening to their friends and their, their relatives, you know, that are younger than them. And so they're only in their early 20s, and there's like four of them. Um, and they came to meet, meet, meet with me here last week, and um, I just found some funding for them and called um, the state office. Um, and so they're making an exception because the deadline was today. And so it's things like that, that I can see how God is really um, bringing opportunities, opening doors for us, um, giving us support. And um, cause it's really hard. It's hard to come and be something new um, because we've been always either tribal government um, you know, a tribal government program or school or or either we've been, you know, at a tribal college. And so creating something new like this is is um, difficult, um, more amongst our own people. And and um, so um, it's it takes time and it, it's it's improving. Um, but, uh, you know, the support is all there. Um, state agencies, they 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 know that the identity and the relationship is vital for this to be successful.